So we get that in the context of the passage. However, so, there, so when we're reading this, I'm not going to go through every single verse. I just want to make it clear that I do understand the context of this passage and that everyone understands the context of this passage. So we don't misapply certain portions of, this, of the passage that don't apply to the area I'm going to be applying it to. And the area I'm applying is, is that very first verse there in chapter 2. It says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. This is a truth that kind of goes even beyond the context. Okay, you can pull this verse out and this stands alone. It doesn't matter who you are. God is not a respecter of persons. And if you're going to judge, however you judge other people, you better expect that same judgment to come onto you. This is not the only passage that states that truth. This is found in multiple places throughout Scripture. Matthew chapter 7 being a primary example of judging and not being a hypocrite when you judge. And when you judge, you better expect that that condemnation is going to come back down upon you. Now, in light of all the events that happened, I think there's a very pertinent subject to be preaching on with Pastor Donnie Romero having all of his secret sins that he was partaking in while he was pastoring a church and literally preaching on things like husbands and wives and preaching on things like adultery and preaching on all these different sins that he is guilty of himself. And you know what? I don't understand how someone that's supposed to be a man of God doesn't fear God and can stand up behind a pulpit and preach these things and preach the word of God and not apply that to yourself and be shaking and trembling in your own shoes and, and, and falling down on your face in repentance and screaming out for mercy to God as you preach these things. It's beyond me. And you know what? I don't know what's coming his way. I'm, I'm a little bit scared. Because I know the God of the Bible. And he has judged and preached. And you know what? I know that the Bible's true. When God says that you're going to be judged the way that you judge, it's coming his way. And all I could do is say, you know, we're going to pray for Mrs. Romero and the victims of his sins. And this is a great example also of how when you sin, you never just impact yourself. It is never just you that is affected by your sins. And this is just a, a blaring example of that. You can say, oh, well, what was he doing? He was the one doing drugs or he was just the one drinking. He was the one just, just doing this stuff. You know, he wasn't getting anyone else involved. Look what it's done to his family. Look what it's done to his church. Look what it's done to his life. Look what it's done to everyone else. He hates his wife. He hates his church. And he hates God. You say, how could you say that? No, I know. No, he does. Because you know why? Because his actions say otherwise. Just like the Bible says that if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you, if you spare the rod that you hate your child, you know what? I believe the Bible when it says that. No, no, no. I really love my son. Yeah, well, you know, if you're not disciplining him properly, the Bible says you hate him, and I believe God's word. And if you, if you lie, if you could look your spouse in the face and lie to them while going behind their back and committing adultery, that's not love. Amen. That's hatred. When you could stand behind a pulpit and, and try to tell people that you're supposed to be leading to live a certain way and you're going around and doing the exact things you're preaching against, you don't love those people. You're hurting people. You're, you're, people are putting trust in you and when you, when you turn out to be some stinking hypocrite, no one is going to believe you ever again and then you're going to shake the confidence of the people who were trusting you. So many people we run into have the testimony, well, I was in church and I was, you know, everything was going great. And I thought I was learning a lot. And then it turns out that, that this, this preacher, this pastor was hurting people or defiling people or involved in all this sin. And you know what? I've had it with that. You know, 
I don't have anything to do with that because they talk all holy and they talk all this game and, they, and they're just a bunch of stinking hypocrites and I don't want to have anything to do with that. And you know what? I don't blame people for having the attitude of not wanting to have anything to do with hypocrites. I don't want to have anything to do with hypocrites either. 